a little bit more information. So here's the you know, where we have sort of classified all the different content that, that, that you may be looking to deal with in governance. So you have your data dictionary business glossary that includes both functional and technical definitions within them. So what that means is, is I have a definition that I want to define the business definition for, you know, AR aging on a receivable, right, accounts receivable aging. And uh, I have a functional definition for what that means, like, oh, this is the number of days since the invoice date or whatever. Uh, and then a technical definition. So if I want to pull that, if, pull that, you know, for the different data systems that I have my receivables in, maybe it's my finance system or, and maybe it's also my data warehouse, I have, I have built reports that I'm going to build out of that. I want to have explanation about how I get AR aging out of both of those systems. And the technical definition should be equivalent, right, to, to, the, to the functional definition. Right, but they might have very different ways or pulled out of the systems. So that's the one sort of content. Uh, and for each one of these, again, we have uh, webinars that go into the specifics of some best practices around how to track and manage and, and build up this content, as well as how to use it in data cookbook. So I encourage you to go look at that. We're just going to sort of move through these pretty quickly. Um, uh, you also have the data deliverables catalog, right? So this is something where you want to figure out what do you want to document, um, either as before you create it or after it's created or both. Uh, of the reports that you have or you know, ways data moves throughout your system. And this is a bit of a thing that's confusing to people. I talk about this data deliverables catalog, but this is sort of anything that you have that's a process related to your data. So how data is, and again, it's like reports or, or uh, ETL processes or surveys and things coming in and out of, of your system as opposed to the data sort of in REST. The data in REST is mainly managed uh, in their data system inventory, right? So uh, this is somewhere where you're, you sort of have two levels. You can document things at a at a system level about the existence of this system. We you know we have our student information system, and that's a very big thing. But we also have the census data extract that's run by IR, and we also have this, you know, spreadsheet that's kept by the finance person who you know does this fancy calculation twice a year to send some information over. So knowing about the existence of all of those and what the purpose of them are and how people, you know, that, that's an important thing to do from an inventory standpoint. And then uh, on top of that, you can document the sort of the technical data models that are inside of them. So, you know, the, all the fields and tables and stored procs and everything that, that's in your student information system, maybe everything that you've got in your census data extract that maybe you've got that in SAS or SPSS or something. And then, the, you know, the details of that spreadsheet is also kind of important, right, if you want to understand that. Um, so that's the type of stuff that goes in the data system inventory. Um, Data lineage, then, this is actually sort of an attribute of your data system, but it's related to the deliverable. So this is a, how data is flowing between these items, right? So what data is, is moving from one system to another? And then you could start at a very high level of just, you know, what systems are connected, and then you can get down to tables and field level two. And, um, and we usually document those as, uh, you know, if, if you've got your ETL document, that's going to define the lineage there. Uh, the data request process is another set of content. So, you know, you can be doing this externally of your knowledge base, but you can also track the requests and the and queues and calendars and recurring events and sort of the project management of, of these items and and you can use it to do to, to actually understand you know how are we tracking in um, you know in, in response times and all that kind of stuff or, or when is that the critical times for the number of requests and processes that we have um, so that's a, another piece of content. Uh, data quality. So this is where you define all your data quality rules, um, or you can have assessments of your data quality, um, and you can also create sort of data quality monitoring and issue resolution. Issue resolution is an important process uh, to be able to, to build up trust in your data. Uh, and again, we have a whole session on this. Uh, it, and you can start thinking about or seeing the interconnectivity. Like to really understand data quality, you kind of maybe need to understand the business glossary and what's in the data system. And those two things may be combined there. Uh, reference data management is another set of content. Uh, and this is how you keep track of um, sort of your um, valid values or your lists of data or, or even sort of inventory type data if you want. But these might be like, these are my registration statuses or, or these are my valid term codes or my degree codes or my GL numbers or, or whatever. Um, and the interesting thing about that is to think of those also as 
my sort of functional definition, and these are the codes as we think of them at the institution, or the, what you might call a master list of these codes. And then they may be represented differently in different data systems, and there needs to be a translation between them, like up to the master or between the systems. So, so that's a challenge and content that you have to think about. So, uh, and another thing you could put in your, your system. Uh, workflows is a part of this, so how to, you know, how does the notifications happen and all that, that's part of, it's really a process. Uh, and then, um, the integrations we talked about, this might be something that's in your, that, that's a part of your content is how these things connect to your systems documentation and everything. Uh, but data policies is the other real content piece. So this is where you might be documenting your data access to various data systems, security, uh, what your data sharing agreements and policies are, uh, privacy codes, what they mean, right? And these also might be attributes that are tied to your data system inventory or to your business glossary, right? So if you have a policy around what privacy codes are and what they mean and what they apply to, you can actually tag the specific business glossary items and the specific data system items for, with those privacy codes. Um, but data policies are things that, you know, people won't need access to centrally that, that change over time. And so you can think of them as, as part of your, you know, your content and your data governance. It's not as like something outside that drives governance, but it's content that evolves and changes over time too. Uh, we already talked about change management and the dependency and how that you change one thing, like the relationship between these items is also part of the content. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the, the standard data. So if you've got, you know, iPads definitions or um, uh, the state of Georgia's uh, definitions for things, you know, whatever that might be, uh, to understand those. And that might not, it might be value to either con to contain those inside your your uh, your knowledge base, or at least to have links uh, to to those other that other information. Uh, and, and the last thing I. I I didn't say also about data system inventory is that another sort of external thing that you can have is, is documentation around your product. So it might also be an interesting place within this data governance thing within your data system inventory to be a central place where you might store documentation about your student information system or your CRM or, or your data warehouse or whatever. So it's just a repository for documentation. And that might include links to, you know, uh, external documentation or to training or, or whatever. All right, so that's all of your content, and as, as I mentioned, each one of these things has their own sort of best practice webinar that we did, and there's, there's lots of details about how you do that, but it's important to think about all this content.